Welcome to See What She Can Do Conversations. I'm Tina. And I'm Caroline. And we're on a mission to make this world a more inclusive, kinder place by uniting women around the power of sport. So we would love to welcome you to our show. Thanks for being here with us. Tune in each week as we talk to change makers, community builders, and really everyday awesome people in the world of sport. And there's so much great stuff happening. Uh, we're excited just to showcase it each week we're together. Hi, I'm Tina Finelli. I'm here with See What She Can Do Conversations, the podcast. I'm co-founder of See What She Can Do, and I'm also here with my co-host, Lisa Dunbar. Lisa Dunbar is a fellow sport lover. She's an important part of our See What She Can Do team, and she's a friend, and we're really happy to have her here. Our guest today is Erin Hamilton. Erin is a real community builder. She's got a real passion for sport as well, as she's been playing sport all of her life as a little kid through school as well as through community sport. And that really kind of ignited a passion for her where she pursued sport in a career. Erin's working with the town of Aurora right now where she's making all kinds of great impact on inclusion and diversity for women and girls. And we're really excited to talk to her today. She's going to open up the curtains a bit and show us what's been happening behind the scenes with sport providers during COVID and how they're preparing to help us get back to sport. Some are already there. Um, She'll also give us some practical tips on how to get ourselves back to doing the things we love to do from a physical activity standpoint. So welcome, Erin. Great. Thanks so much. I'm excited to be here today. So fun. So great. Yeah. yeah. Um, we're excited to have you too, actually. And um, pretty, pretty excited to have this conversation. So I'm going to actually get things started and ask you your first question. Um, we've seen this pandemic has really uh, taken on a toll on, on many. And specifically around, we saw sport come to a real grinding halt and physical activity in some cases. Um, I was wondering if you can tell us a little bit about uh, the impact of COVID in communities and, and as it relates to people's physical activity and organized sport and help us understand why we all need to remain um, active and how we can participate. Excellent. So as you said, for many, um, sport came to that grinding halt. Um, So what they have traditionally participated in um, stopped really quickly um, for many with no time to plan or think about what this means. And they've been doing the activities that um, they love and have participated in for many years. Um, all of a sudden, it's not available to them anymore and having to adjust and sort of rethink um, how they were going to move forward has been difficult for many um, and has been really a big challenge um, to sort of think, OK, what, what am I going to do next? How am I going to engage and how am I going to participate? So um For some, sport has started to be um, cut back up and running. Um, The delivery model is different, which is a change for many and adapting to change and sort of being able to learn about what that means for them Um, and anticipating that it's going to be like this for an extended period of time, um, that it's not going to be sort of, okay, for the next four weeks, I have to adopt and accommodate change. Um, This is going to be for the extended period. And so what does it mean for my family? What does it mean for me? Um, And so many through the process have gone out and found during that time they weren't able to participate in their traditional sports, found alternative ways Mm -hmm. to be active. Mm -hmm. And we can talk a bit um, as we go on and and share some examples of that. And some have um, decided to return to their activities as they've opened up in a revised format and found that it has actually been great um, for them, their families, and the revised format has been okay. You actually have a great example of your son, right? How he uh, he's back to play with baseball. 
Yeah. So his, he's gone back. Um, my son who's 10 gone back to his baseball practices. Um, they've only done practices so far. And, and I tell you the laughter and excitement mm-hmm. out on the field when they returned, um, it, the changes that were made to make sure it was a safe environment actually has not had any negative impact on their participation. They were just so happy to be out there together. Yeah. Yeah, very great. aware of what's going on. And they created a little thing amongst their team where um, they yelled the number six. If at any point somebody was getting too close to one another, they were within six okay. feet or just need to reevaluate the scene. And it actually was really sort of a light and an easy way to manage this change that they have gone gone back into on the baseball field. And whether it's the coach, whether it's a player, everybody wanted everybody to feel safe, comfortable. Yeah. And it was like instant six, everybody stops, looks around. Okay, do I need to step back a bit? Um, but in a very comfortable, non-stressful way for the kids. Yeah, they and just want to participate. You, right? Yeah, and they're so yeah. excited to be back yeah. out there. Yeah. And every day my son wakes up, is it baseball today? Oh, that's and so it's fantastic. almost like it's almost like this this is a new norm. It's like I like sure there's some things um would he love to be playing games on a daily basis and have all of that he didn't but he's okay with it yeah Yeah. he's great and just the fact that he's back out there interacting and doing something he loves yeah um has such had such a positive impact and I know that's not just for him on the team and talking to all the parents they're just so happy and even parents to to get out with their kids and um, obviously following all the rules of social distancing we're limiting the number of parents that are out there watching but um, just just to get back out and even see their kids in that environment has been really beneficial for parents as well the joy of sport will always shine through right and physical activity for everybody right you see their smiling faces exactly well you know and i i've had a similar experience um erin you and i have spoken about it with going back to cross but that's kind of one of my sports and you know the anxiety initially of getting back and what to expect and you know our organ our um our box the uh, crossfit aurora central was really good at putting up communication around what they're doing from a safety protocol standpoint to make sure that they're you know compliant with you know all the safety protocols and so the first time you go in with a mask and you stand in your little box and you know you're, you're kind of like what what does this look like but eventually like your kids did we start to hold each yeah. other accountable like yeah. don't forget put your mask back on and don't forget spray that down and then it becomes second nature yeah and then we're doing the things we love again different isn't bad it's just different it's your right? new normal yeah. right it's our new normal yeah. Yeah. so great exactly. yeah that's yeah. awesome. So, Aaron, we also, um, you know, as people start to consider going back, I mean, I, you know, shared with you a little bit about my anxiety, a little bit of anxiety about going back indoors and, you know, what that new normal was going to look like. Um, I know I was more comfortable with the communication that came from my provider, my sport provider, and I was able to have conversations with them before I came back. Can you give some tips to other people, maybe to some of our listeners around the sorts of things that they can be asking their sport provider to make sure that they have the confidence that, you know, they're being um, provided with a safe environment and that all the safety protocols are in place so that they can get back to doing all the great things they love to do? Definitely. So I think, um, you sort of nailed it there is is being familiar with the environment that you're going back into both from the perspective of you as an individual your family feeling comfortable with what you're stepping into as well as ensuring that you as an individual are following the safety protocols um, that are being put in place so everybody around you and yourself are safe Um, I think there's a lot of great things that are happening out there amongst our sport organizations municipalities um, fitness clubs to be able to share and make information readily available. Um, Some are doing videos so people can visually see what they can Mm. expect when they walk into a facility. Um, There's a lot that are posting information on their website, but it's really critical if you can't find the information you need, and even if you have seen it something, to reach out to organizations. They want to hear from you. They want to answer your questions and be able to ensure that you have the information you need to make informed decisions. And so when you are considering going back out, 
possibly for your first time or going from one environment to the next, there's lots of great questions you can ask. I'm going to share a couple of questions to consider. It's not limited to these questions, but as a starting point, be familiar. Ask about what their mask policy is. So obviously within York Region, there's um, a requirement to wear masks um, in indoor spaces, um, but there is also the piece about when you're physically active, um, you don't need to um, have a mask on. But in some situations, as an example, my son's baseball team, when the boys, um, when the players are up to bat, they wear a mask. And mm -hmm. so does the catcher, they're within a smaller distance with one another for a short period of time, it's very short, but in those situations, so you're familiar with that. Our parents and guardians, so if you're signing your kid up, are you allowed to stay and watch? Do they have space to do so? What are the rules around it? Or in some cases, programs are opening back up where parents must be involved in the program. So if it's younger kids where um, practicing physical distancing um, may be a bit more difficult to implement, it may be a requirement that parents actually stay and participate with their child. How much fun will that be? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I remember playing those soccer games where I was going child against parent and they quickly overtook any skill I had in soccer. <laughs> But also, like the kids sometimes love when the yeah. parent comes yeah, out and plays, and yeah. and uh, but as well, just again, it ensures that level of environment. So those yeah. that are delivering the program, they're taking it to that stage where they're ensuring it's a safe environment yeah. for all. Um, and then parents can be familiar with what's going on. Um, out on the field of play or in a gymnasium, whatever it may be. Um, ask about what type of training they're providing to staff or volunteers so that they're a great familiar question. with when yeah. they go out. Because um, in a lot of cases, um, you're dropping your kids off. You may be able to stay and watch, but there's individuals out there that are running the programs and, and many are providing um, great training and resources and support to those that are on the ground delivering programs to make sure that they're prepared and they're comfortable with what they're doing, their knowledge, um, about what they're doing. Um, what types of things are organizations putting in place to ensure people do physically distance? So are yeah, there markings on the one. floor? Yeah. Are they setting out cones? So I know in some cases with some programs, whether it be dance programs or karate programs, yeah. um, taping boxes on the floor or yeah. taping markers on the floor and their child has to stay within a certain space to ensure that they don't cross over. And mm -hmm. that's um, what they're from. That's great for all. That's great for adults too. We're experiencing that with great. my uh, with my CrossFit box. We've got arrows and, yeah. and taped um, yeah, taped boxes on the floor. It just helps you visually remember, right? This is where you yeah, need to the, be. the visual, and yeah. it's a constant reminder. Yeah. Um, what changes are there to the, the traditional rule? So in a, in a lot of cases, there, there have been adaptations for people's safety to traditional rules. So become familiar with what those are um, so that you can um, know and communicate and be familiar with when you're going in. Um, ask a bit about equipment. So how is that being managed? Yeah, in important. some cases, individuals have to bring their own equipment. Um, or in some cases, there is minimal sharing of equipment. So what's the cleaning practices that are happening in between? Um, or an individual has their own set of equipment that belongs to a club or an organization that's dedicated to them for that practice or session. And then they're cleaning it in between the, the next use. So they may not have to bring their own, but they have a dedicated set of equipment as an example. And then asking a bit about policies. There's a lot of been, there's been a lot around policy creation to talk about if there is a positive case or if um, you feel sick or somebody feels sick, what's the policy around participation and how is that communicated out? So asking that information is going to build some comfort, but also create you an environment where you're familiar with what you're required to do. Um, and some examples out there and, and a lot of sport organizations or teams are running um, virtual meetings prior to going yeah. out yeah. Um, onto the field so they can walk through and even allowing kids to ask questions. So we as parents are asking questions, but if you're able to sort of get your kids together, if it's a set team that's coming out for the first time, what kind of questions do you have as kids? It's a great um, idea. There's a lot of things yeah. running yeah. through their mind. So yeah. what types of questions do you have? So ask if they're running something like that, um, just to be able to help you and um, prepare to go back out on the field to play. That's very cool. We like, I mean, the, f there's of course going to be some anxiety and, and 
we're talking constantly about just the importance of communications, like good, clear, simple, but clear communications to alleviate any of the uh, like guessing yeah. from things where you can so that you can help reduce some of that anxiety mm-hmm. and get people like let them be excited about a return to play, whatever that looks like. Right. It's Absolutely. very cool. And yeah. And because in, in many cases, um, this may be sort of your first organized activity yeah. or organized um yeah, activity that you've gone out to do. People haven't returned to school yet. People haven't returned to necessarily their work environment. So this may be the first outside of shopping that you've needed to do for your family. And and in a lot of cases, kids have not been out shopping. So this is their first as well, um, or first for an end of anybody participating. And so really becoming familiar and breaking down um, what you can expect so that you do address um, any anxiety yeah. or I think we all are it's, yeah. it, it's sort of yeah. like okay this is the first time and, and just even I think for some it's like anxiety about I have to follow these rules and I don't want to do something wrong and once they That's get into the true. rhythm yeah um, it just sort of is natural and it doesn't take long for it to become that new norm. And this is the way it is. And well, so the great... it's that initial, like I'm stepping out onto exactly. a field of play yeah. or in a yeah. gym yeah. or a program. And depending on the age of a child or, or for adults in particular, they're aware of what's happening around them. Yeah, and we'll so... all hold each other. I mean, I think the great news, you know, looking at your example of your son in, you know, as a younger child in, in sport and, you know, me as an adult, you get into the rhythm of helping each other stay accountable so that we can keep the program we're in running because yeah. we love it. Right? Yeah. Nobody wants these things to shut back down again. We all want to participate in the in the physical activity that we love so much. Yeah. So. Um, I think it's important to remember as well that you're when you do get back that it's okay. Like you may slip up, but there are people there to help and people that have been there already that can help you, you know, figure out how to navigate it all. Yeah. Even like even yeah. like I'm an adult. Yeah. But when I'm back, I'm excited to get yeah. back to the sport that I love. Yeah. So you kind of like you forget. Yeah. So it's I think everyone yeah. needs to have patience and tolerance for yeah. people to just be excited and to forget. Exactly. And I think like and it's and I'm thrilled to see things starting to slowly reopen. And it's for, for me, for my kids, for my friends, and it's, it's amazing. And maybe Aaron, um, like maybe you could share with us some of, some of the programs that you see in the town of Aurora that are opening up. And, and we talk a lot about reimagining what sport and physical activity looks like, whether it's, you know, competitive, organized, or just straight up plain physical activity. We talk about reimagining what it looks like a lot. Can you give us some examples through the town of Aurora of, as we reopen? Definitely. So a um, lot of time and energy um, behind the scenes, whether it's the town of Aurora or sport organizations, um, reimagining and, and what what is a safe way to reopen? We all know it needs to in a safe way and, and for the mental health of, of our community mm-hmm. as a whole, physical fitness for our community as a whole. Mm-hmm. So be open to change and be willing to adapt to the new environments. And, and a lot of time and energy has gone into looking at how do we do this in a safe way, but a fun way. Yeah. And so we can continue to get people involved. And so as some examples, um, the town itself has slowly um, been reopening. So both from the perspective of some programming and facilities, but also opening up our facilities facilities for outdoor users to come in and use and and the town's been cautious and really looked at all elements to make sure that when people do return they're doing so in a safe way. Um, So as an example um, our our first opening was our pool facility, one of our pool facilities and so there was a lot of pieces implemented in terms of going in and out of the facility so there was no crossover of individuals. Mm -hmm. Flow of traffic was considered in terms of when you come into the facility then when you're on the pool deck it's one-way traffic so people aren't crossing over um, when they do. When they're actually in the pool um, one, one individual per lane so traditionally in a lane swim um, you'll see multiple Mm -hmm. people in one lane now it's one person per one lane you have to book in advance it's all booking in advance so we know exactly who's coming into our facility um, at any time that it's open we've also opened aquafit classes Um, again 
limited number people have to space out when they're in the pool. So some examples where lane swimming, um, you have adults, aquafit, you have adults, we've got some um, varying ages doing the lane swimming, but then we also have some of our traditional user groups back in the pool mm -hmm. um, to be able to run some of their programs. And they have very detailed um, policies and procedures in place and plans to ensure that they're following um, practices. And then um, we're going to talk a bit um, more in a bit about some of the programming that's happened and within the town to be able to open it up to our community members, children and youth. But our ICE facilities have also opened, so we have lots of our user that's groups. That's what we love. Thanks, Maxine. Yes. Very happy. Yes. So, um, we have women's hockey back out on the yes. ice. And, and I've been, no, I've been talking to Central York Girls Hockey Association Association and, yeah. and they say their return has been fantastic. It, it so has far. been overwhelming, honestly. I'm on the email list because my daughter started back last Sunday. And okay. as she came out, I thought, I'm going to let her have her thing because she's now in the 18 plus group. And so okay. she's now joining, she's gone from competitive hockey to joining Women's House League. And um, so I thought, I'm going to let her have her own thing. They've opened back up. And then she came out. I'm like, forget that. I'm going back next <laughs> week. <laughs> it just looks so fun. They came back just rosy and so happy to be yeah. there. Yeah, and they did. Yeah. And, and so that's where you're seeing. So what you're seeing is some gaps, again, between ice bookings yeah. to ensure that um, as one group um, comes in, does their hockey, they're gone before the next group comes in. Yeah. Limited access to dressing rooms. Everybody's expected to come dressed as an example yeah. for ice users for hockey. So you're just going in to put your skates on, you're distancing within the dressing room, you're getting on the ice. And even when people come into the facility, they have to have a mask on until yeah. They, yeah. they put their helmet on and get on yeah. on the ice. It's like so again, a tyke coming back in fully dressed. Like you're right. seeing well dressed. getting out of cars <laughs> with, their, with their equipment on. It's awesome. But I think it's like which is, we've been five months, which it's, yeah. some days it feels like a whole lot longer than yeah. that. But yeah. I think one thing that we've gotten very good at is practicing patience. And I think yeah, people I like just practice your patience. Right. Yeah. And, like, and accepting that that in order for us to get back, we need to do things differently. And yeah. that's OK. Oh, yeah. I'm OK yeah. wearing my my stuff driving to the arena. Yeah. Uh, or putting my pants on just outside because yeah. it's hard to, you know. Drive I'll tell you, car. driving home from the rink with a 17 year old that is in his gear, having just <laughs> taken so only fun. his skates off, totally different experience. <laughs> just going to say. Is, right? <laughs> but people have been so receptive to the change. Yeah. And I think that's what's critical to make it a positive experience accept the change, embrace it yep. and run with it. Yeah. And then for the experience for everybody involved is so positive and you're out there and you just feel so good. I was talking to um, a, a dad that is, is sort of a, a men's league and the team all, always went out and he hasn't been on the ice for so long. And he said, it just felt so good, but he's like, like I tripped over the blue line, like, I <laughs> skate. but but he was like, it was hilarious. like it was just so fun, and then you just get back into the yeah, rhythm of it, absolutely. and and everything like that. So so the end result is worth the change, and and it's okay. And you're seeing a lot more common practices around regular hand washing. Yeah. We talked about the markers, um, limited to no sharing of equipment. Um, all of those things are being put in place as an added element to ensure safety of those involved. So, um, and those that are running programs have been really great to adapt. Um, where we're still seeing um, sort of a slow transition back is your traditional gymnasium sports, mm -hmm. obviously. Um, there's been, there'll be a delay, but then some of those are adapting by taking their programs outside, yeah. enjoy the nice weather yeah. and run some of their programs outside, um, which is a great space. Um, we're seeing lots of cleaning of high touch points areas, entrances, exits, exits. So all of those things are being put in place um, within the facilities that are being used as well as the organizations that are using the facilities. So um, the, it's, it's great. So there's things that are opening up, some that are sort of coming to the end of what their summer season would be. And, and they really got sort of six weeks out there and embraced it and were quite happy with it, um, with it, how it was in the end, the kids had a chance to develop some that are just starting to open up. So everybody's at a different stage, but everybody's been working hard to make sure that it's safe and, and really been a benefit to those that are back out on the field of play or in the gym or whatever it may be. And, and the town uh, fitness center is opening next Monday for the first time. So you're going to 
to see a lot Yay. of our um, fitness users um, back out there, and they're quite excited as well. That's and again, awesome. Great That's practices great. in play. So, Erin, you mentioned that there are programs that are being taken outdoors because the indoor option isn't yet available. One of those programs is the Play in the Park series mm-hmm. um, that the town of Aurora hosts. Do you want to give us just a, you know, a one-liner, a headliner on what that looks like? Because we're going to call in Cindy Shaver, and she's she's a mom of two whose child, uh, whose children actually participated in that program. Um, and we're going to talk to her a little bit about what that was like getting back into the program, you know, the impact of COVID overall on her and her family, and how, um, you know, how getting out there has really been a positive thing for her. Do you just want to give us a one-liner before we call out to Cindy? Sure, yeah. So our Play in the Park program um, was an opportunity to get children and youth out um, and be able to participate in a variety of programs throughout the month of August. So you could sign up for one, you could sign up for three different themes from sport to arts to nature. Um, You came out, spent 45 minutes outside um, in a park facility where you had a chance to do activities at a physically distant space um, and connect with other people in the community. Community. And it, um, the the uptake and the response has been phenomenal and, yeah. and all the programs have sold out and it's been really beneficial to get some of our community members back out in programs within the town. Well, we've been pretty blessed to have some amazing weather. So those outdoor programs, I'm sure, have you know, really benefited by the fact that that it's uh, it's not thunderstorming every every day. <laughs> Some exactly. of that transition too, it right? Has, if people are anxious. We've had fantastic weather. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. And if people are anxious, it's a bit of a, it's a, it's a, a smoothing into a, the new normal of yeah. indoor sport too. Yeah. Um, exactly. I'm just going to dial, I'm going to uh, give Cindy a call here. Fantastic. We're dialing in. We'll dial her in. How are you? Hi, I'm good. How are you? Good, good. Hi, Cindy. Welcome to the show. You're here with Tina, Lisa, and we have Erin from the town of Aurora on the line. Hi, Cindy. Hi, good morning. (laughs) Thanks so much for joining our show. We've been talking to Erin over the last few minutes about what's happening in the town of Aurora as things start to reopen and people start to get back into the things we so love to do as we move our bodies. Um, We understand, Cindy, that you're a mom of two and that you joined one of the Town of Aurora programs, the Play in the Park series, this summer. Do you want to talk to us a little bit about uh, the impact of COVID-19 on your family and what made you decide to to get your kids back into play, organized play, I guess? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think like so many of us, it's been... It's been a struggle, I guess, yeah. in, in adapting to this sort of new way of life. And I got an 11 year old and a three year old. And so managing that dynamic where they want to be active and they want to be out and, and around their peers and I'm not being able to do that has been was tough. So um, definitely as soon as we were able to, we were looking for those options. So my older, my older son, um, you know, got back into his organized sports. But what I was finding is that while lots of sports and opportunities were reopening, there was this void for my youngest, Mm -hmm. you know, and she's three and she's still trying to develop, you know, her coordination, her gross motor skills, all of those important things. All the social aspect too, right? Uh, Exactly. And, and I was looking and I've been looking because my son was out getting to do all these fun things. And I'm like, (laughs) but my daughter can't do any of this. And, and then the town opened up this play in the park series and it was such a godsend really. Um, she, she's done a couple of them, um, and has really enjoyed them. And, um, I'm, I'm hoping that they're going to do more. (laughs) Yay. Now, what did that experience look like? What were, you know, at the top of your mind, what was different about this program that might've, you know, it might have been different a few months ago, pre-March, right? <laughs> what would so, what, so so yeah? So definitely, yeah. there's obviously the um, constraints, um, like the um, sorry, I'm losing my word, um, but I, I guess it's um, that they're having to keep distance, yeah. and so there's definitely the safety procedures that are in place to ensure that. So 
you know, making sure that we're checking in, having that safety checklist um, when I'm coming with my daughter, um, you know, sanitizing our hands before we go in and then maintaining that distance throughout the program, which I thought would be strange, but it wasn't as strange as you might think. Yeah, that's great. The kids didn't seem to even notice. And I was, I thought that they might try to gravitate towards each other because they're young. There wasn't any of that. Parents were participating. So I guess they, you know, so my daughter tended to come towards me versus the, uh, you know, versus other kids. Mm -hmm. So I think that helped. But, um, but everyone sort of maintained their distance. It's out in the park. So you're getting the fresh air. There was, they've got that um, large canopy area that um, if it were to rain, that there was shelter there, that they could still have that program. Um, Overall, I thought it was, was really well done. Awesome. And how, um, how was that program? Like, do you think it's helped her emotionally and you really as a parent because you're getting out there too right how is it how has it kind of helped your your mental health to be out there oh definitely for me it's been it's been great like as much as I love to play with my daughter it's totally different when you get to be um, a participant and watch her enjoying someone else leading um you know, leading her through all sorts of different activities and then also learning from their peers, even though they can't necessarily get close to their peers, they're around other kids their age, which I think is so good for their their own well-being. And then for me, absolutely, just not having to have that um, pressure of having to be the one delivering yeah. the activity yes. and um, being able to just sort of sit back and enjoy. That's, you know, that's a really great point because you know, as we're all at home with all of our kids, whether they're young or university age adult (laughs) children, you know, it's nice to have that break to be able to just be a part of it without having to organize anything, right? Yeah. And they learn from other, they get to watch each other and learn different styles from each other, right? Yeah, that's fantastic. That's great. So what are you doing for yourself, Cindy? Is there anything on your plate? Like, are you starting to get involved? It doesn't have to be organized, but you know, one of the questions that we ask our guests typically is kind of what's your favorite thing to do and from an activity, physical activity standpoint, and what are you doing during this crazy time of COVID to kind of move your body? So physical activity has always been a, a big part of my life. So I was going to the gym prior to COVID and obviously I stopped that. The gyms have opened up again, but I haven't gotten there yet. So I've been doing a lot of um, virtual classes, That's great. Um, which have been great, but, um, the exercise is key. I think it's really helped me to, um, be able to handle the situation and yeah. be okay being at home so much, right? Once you leave your stress. body, you just yeah. feel better ready to tackle the day. <laughs> yeah. That's fantastic. Well, thank you so much for sharing your experience. We're really thrilled to have you here. And, um, we hope to see you visit us, uh, on see what she can do because there's all kinds of, uh, programs and organizations on our, our website as well. Um, you know, where we're helping to showcase the great things that are happening in this community and beyond. So, uh, we look forward to seeing you there. Thank you so much. I'm definitely going to check it out. Okay. Fantastic. <laughs> Talk to you soon. Bye, Cindy. Thanks. Take care. Thanks. So... so- Back, back to Erin. Back to Erin. <laughs> so yeah. we're coming up to September, and for kids of all ages, schools looking very different. Um, physical activity. As some kids are starting to participate again in their organized or non-organized sport, they're getting to use fields. But I think about like everything will look different for for kids in school who may or may not actually be physically attending school. Um, and, and even for the families, mm-hmm. um, how, how, do we, how do we ensure or make sure that people continue to be physically active? Because we've talked this morning like all about the benefits of that. Um, how do we keep to reimagine how we can stay active as we live through this next phase? Yeah, of the world yeah, opening definitely. back up. Yeah. 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 I know, right? And and uh, as you said. Like for um, all of us, right? Of, all the family. Yeah. yeah. Everybody. Yeah. Exactly. And and as we get to the stage where kids are returning to school in, in different formats, mm-hmm. whether it's in person or whether it's online, um, it's going to be another element that families are working through. But continuing to keep the kids active during that time can also be beneficial in supporting them through that transition as well, just to give them an avenue to sort of um, 
sort of be out there, be active and burn some energy, whatever it may be. So um, take some time to do some research, um, whether it's looking into what you have done in the past and learning about how that's going to change and does that fit Um, Mm -hmm. for your family, or be open to trying new things. And I think um, there's a lot of people that have tried new things that they would not normally have done um, as a result of COVID. And so um, look out, check things out, like go to um, the town website, go to the website of the sport organizations, visit platforms such as See What She Can Do, um, where there's tons of opportunities listed there where it outlines sport providers, where people share stories, you may learn about opportunities by reading other people's stories. Absolutely. Yeah, um, and absolutely. you may be able to connect with people. And so I think that's, that's a critical piece is be open to change yeah. um, and ask those questions. So I talked earlier about what types of questions to ask ask the questions, do some research, spend some time, um, because in the end, you want to be comfortable. And there's a lot of things out there that people are doing um, that are available and and available in multiple formats. Some of our organizations or even fitness classes are still doing online or doing outdoor and doing indoor. So even within where you think, oh, I'm not sure I'm ready to go back to a gym, there may be other opportunities that exist within that same gym to do something. Yeah, the shift is you've got to actively look. Right? So yeah, it's interesting that you say that. And you don't even realize, you just sort of think like, I'm not going to go back to what I was doing before. Well, in many cases, there's adaptations to that. And exactly. so you need to be comfortable mm-hmm. and you need to get the background information you, um, for you to be able to make an informed um, decision. And, and don't feel pressure to go back right away. Spend the time looking into things yeah. and feel like, okay, I can return when I'm ready. Mm-hmm. And if you're not ready to necessarily return to what you traditionally did, what are some other things that I may mm-hmm. be able to do in the meantime where I can still be active? And I think that's important is remembering the benefits of being active. And so whether it's just taking like an hour out of your day and going for a walk or going for a bike ride or whatever it may be for, and if that's what fits for you right now, that works. Yeah, you might have to do a little bit of homework, right? Yeah, Yeah. right. You might have to do a little bit of homework to find out what you love and then get doing it. And as parents, our, my kids are a little older, but like it's, it's a reminder to them, which you probably wouldn't have thought to do before. Um, my kids are going back to school physically, um, but the, what sport and physical activity looks like at the school is very different. Right. So they will need to do a little bit of their own homework to find what is comfortable for them. Right. And as a parent, exactly. it's, it, I may need to find myself in a place to go, gentle reminder, you've been in school all day, uh, the half day, yeah. and for the other half, you've been online. Yeah. You need to get up and move. Go move. Right? Exactly. Go, yeah. go Your feet move. are getting numb. It's yeah. time to get up yeah. and start moving. you got to do a little bit of homework, <laughs> right? Yeah. It, exactly. Exactly. And so what that is, um, each family needs to, each individual, each family needs yeah. to find the right fit for yeah. them. And I, and I think what's critical is we all need to support one another too. I agree in the decisions that everybody makes about what the best avenue is for their family. So mm-hmm. yeah. let's share, let's learn from one another and mm-hmm. let's support one another in their return to physical activity, whether it's already happened or whether they're just now sort of starting to get back in and try new things. So let's all support one another in that. And what's right for one is not necessarily right for the other. So everybody needs Mm -hmm. to um, do what's right and what they feel comfortable and safe doing. And so I think that's critical. We are excited that the play in the park programs are going to continue um, through the month of September. So again, knowing that kids are back Back into school mm-hmm. in some format they'll take place on weekday evenings and weekends um, and again it's not a you need to commit for an extended period of time you sign up for one or you could sign up for multiple and there's different themes to them so that's, that's an example where so we fun. are because of the response that we received and and it was well received and and really was a positive experience for those involved we're going to continue um, them in September 
Amazing. Well, as an example, we're, we're sort of reinventing and opening to ch- open to change. Well, thank you so much for all the work that the town of Aurora is doing uh, in our community. And we're really grateful for your leadership. We're going to sign off today. But before we go off the mm-hmm. line, um, we wanted to make sure uh, our listeners know that you're back again next time to talk a little bit more about um, how... Uh, you're showcasing as a town uh, female leaders in our community. So Erin will join us next time. So make sure uh, you tune in for the next episode. Um, And we also ask all of our guests the same question. And since you're our first uh, guest, our first very real guest for our podcast, you'll be the first to answer this question. No question. Yeah. (laughs) Um, So our question is, what do you love to do from an active living standpoint And how are you moving your body through this crazy COVID pandemic time? Yeah. So for me, there's nothing better than an early morning run. Mm -hmm. So peace and quiet, my, a bit of me time and seeing like a sunrise first thing in the morning and lots of fresh air for me is a great way to sort of give myself some energy for the rest of the day and just to get out and sort of just listen to some good music. So for me, it's a a good morning run, but I also have to say that um, we've done a lot as a family as a result of COVID Mm -hmm. in terms of being active. So where we would traditionally have each of our own individual activities, we are now going out for regular walks, bike rides, swimming in the pool together, playing basketball out on. It really is amazing to see groups of families mm -hmm. walking down the street. Like I've never seen like moms, dads, kids, dogs, like usually it's mom or mom and dad or, you know, or, in an individual doesn't have to be a mom or a dad, but you rarely would see whole families of people walking down the street. And at first you're like, oh, it must be a family, va- you know, a family festivity. But now it's it's commonplace. So yeah, yeah. I think we're starting to see that trend. I think it's really positive to see families doing stuff yeah. together. Right. Yeah. And yeah, to find that time right. for yourself. Right. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Definitely. And I do want to just comment before we do sign off that I'm, I was very excited to be here and please visit See What She Can Do um, as a platform. So many great um, opportunities to connect with others, which um, is always important and now more than ever. And um, there's so many great resources and information on there. So I appreciate all the work that you're doing to connect people in the community because it's vital um, for us to continue to do so as we move through this time. Awesome. Well, thank Thank you very much for joining us, Erin. We look forward to uh, chatting with you on our next episode. Great. Looking forward to it. Have a great one. Thanks. You too. Bye. Bye.